Okay, so I'm uh, very, very pleased to be with you today for this very important seminar. We work very closely with um, the future of religious heritage, who has been um, a very um, uh, solid, faithful partner during the European Year of Cultural Heritage that we did in 2018. And I'm delighted to be here with you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to present how the European Commission is trying to help the cultural sector, including the cultural heritage sector and including the religious um, uh, sites to, to, to survive the crisis. But I'm going to take you from Montserrat, which was a wonderful, very concrete, very beautiful example. I'm going to take you to a very macro level, and I don't have, you know, those nice pictures. So um, it's going to be a bit more abstract. So please, I hope that you will bear with me. Okay. So here I am with my presentation, which uh, you will be able to uh, to ha have that I will share with uh, Jordi and we will send it to you if you are interested because I'm going to quote many schemes and uh, there will be a number of figures. So I know it's always sometimes complicated if you want to take notes. So what did we do um, uh, during the COVID crisis? Well, first as European Commission and has, um, you know, the cultural policy team. First, of course, we monitored the situation very carefully. Uh, so we read everything we could, we took note of everything. We also listened to as many stakeholders as possible. Everybody started writing to us, sending us letters, and that's normal. And we also had a big conference at the end of June with 200 uh, cultural organizations to be able to listen uh, to their concerns and adapt you know, in the best possible way. Then we um, devised two ways of responding. We adapted the existing funding programs, but we also tried to come up with new solutions. And I'm going to explain how. So first, when I said that we, um, we listened to the sector, uh, we met many people, we spoke with many people, but also, you know, the sector uh, the cultural heritage sector organized itself to gather information and the future for religious heritage had a big survey but so other organizations did as well for heritage in general and here you can have all the links and all the uh, the survey that we uh, collected we set up we decided to set up um, two platforms uh, because it was quite clear that in the beginning, at the European level, what was needed was communication, sharing information, sharing problems, sharing possible solutions. So we set up this platform, online platform called Creatives Unite, um, which was immediately a big success, which confirmed that, you know, organizations in Europe first needed to share information and, and try and work out solutions together. And since we launched Creatives Unite platform, and you can just type, you know, Creatives Unite and um, .eu, it pops up. Uh, we have had um, 25,000 users, more than 500 um, posts published, and we still receive, um, you know, many requests for posting news and, uh, and surveys and information. We also had an online uh, meeting with Commissioner Gabriel. I mean, that's the thing I was referring to with 200 participants. Um, we created another online platform, which is less relevant for you, but just, you know, which shows you how we work for the countries in the EU, for the member states, so that they could share between themselves what measures they were taking at governmental level. And that's, of course, a closed platform only for them. But Creatives Unite is a platform that you can all access so the first batch of measures we took were um, taken in March and April, and um, that was regarding the, our EU funding program called Creative Europe, which is dedicated to supporting the cultural and creative industries and the sector. And there we decided to apply the maximum flexibility for existing projects, you know, the, 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 the 
the most urgent thing was that people were phoning us saying, oh, my contract is going to finish in two months, but I cannot perform this or that task. What's going to happen? Or my budget is changing because of COVID. I'm not going to use it, but I need to use it in a different way. So the first measure was applying flexibility. The second was um, we designed, well, we, we accelerated um, the publication of a call to support the performing art for a total of 2.5 million euros. So we published that mid-June and is going to be soon operational uh, to, to the focus was on digital culture and, and virtual mobility. So new money in a way. Then we said, uh, should we divert the existing money which is going to go to projects uh, or should we just speed up our current procedure and we decided to speed up what we call the cooperation project the allocation of that money because we thought you know those projects are ready all they need is our funding um, to get started and that will help the sector um, you know I mean uh, instead of trying to set up something new which is going to take time let's channel this money as soon as possible which is what we did um, and then, of course, we get in touch with all the Creative Europe desks um, that are helping the sector in the countries to try and see what more we could do. So what we decided to do as well is, um, well, I, I, I can tell you something a bit behind the scenes. You know, we really wanted to help the sector and uh, we, you know, my colleagues and I, we really worked very hard in March, April. Um, trying to, you know, I mean, find money where it was not, <laughs> find money where, wherever it was, but we had trouble. Why? Because, uh, you know, the, the way the EU, uh, you know, organize the budget is the following, you know, you have the budget for every seven years and then you, you, you go year by year. But 2020 was the end of those seven years and we needed the parliament and the member states to agree which is very complicated on the next budget 2021 and we are in that still in that negotiation of the budget and of the, the so-called legal basis allowing us to spend money so we could not use the money coming from 2021 or foreseen for 2021 because it's an entirely new cycle and at, in 2020 when the crisis hit we were at the end of the, 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 the seven-year um, budget cycle. Therefore, for Creative Europe, we had spent or, 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 you know, we were too advanced in contracting everything and we could not find any money uh, despite all our, our um, efforts. So we had the uh, brainstorming with our director general and she said, no, 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 we have to do something. Um, that's not possible. So she turned to the other big uh, scheme in her portfolio, which is Erasmus Plus, which is designed to, you know, to, to boost education skills and, uh, and uh, research and universities. And Erasmus Plus has 10 times more money than Creative Europe. It's 10 times bigger a budget. And you've got more margin there. So she called a meeting and she said to, to my colleagues working for Erasmus Plus, you know, find a way to find money for to support uh, culture in what way or another. And so what we, they could find, because they're very rich, is 100 million euros, which is not bad, um, for a call uh, to support skills development, digital competencies, and social inclusion through art, through uh, creativity. But, and the people who can present projects are those working for edu the education sector, training, youth, but in, in collaboration with the cultural and creative sector. So that's one way that we can support and bring some money and hope and projects to the cultural and creative sectors working in partnership with education. So that's one of the things we did uh, to address the, the, the crisis. Next slide. And then there were, the EU took a lot of, um, horizontal measures. By horizontal, I mean that they address all economic sectors, not only culture. So you had something called the Corona Response Investment Initiative with uh, reallocating some money. You have something else called SURE, SURE um, which allows countries in the EU member states 
to um, pay salaries of creators, artists, independents that have lost jobs. But all that is to be used by our member states. It's not, as commission, we made the money available, but we are not designing ourselves how it is used in, on the ground. Then we also had uh, what we call, you know, I mean, the, we gave the countries the possibility to use state aids, which usually is very controlled by the commission to support again, to give money subsidies to the current creative sectors. And they did that a lot. So those were horizontal measures that the countries were able to use. Uh, next slide. Other examples with a big uh, recovery plan for um, Europe, the so-called REACT EU scheme allows to use money which goes to the region to fund cultural projects, cultural infrastructure projects. Um, Invest EU as well, um, the Digital Europe program, which will be uh, you know, open as of 2021, will also be able to fund culture. So there are several schemes that can um, that can help. Next slide. Ah, and then there you have all the links where you can find uh, additional information if that's uh, useful to you, including this platform Creatives Unite that I was mentioning. And I think I've reached more or less the end of my presentation. Yes, I have. But I'm here to answer all your uh, questions. And uh, believe me, uh, if we could have done more, we would have done more. Uh, but again, you know, this crisis is hitting Europe at a very an bad moment. And um, for the time being, that's, uh, that's what we've uh, been able to put in place.